now bubble sort so actually what we are going to do in bubble sort is that we are having an array of haphazard values now what we are going to do is to um, put those values in an order so the default order that we are going to discuss is ascending order of anything remember if it is number it is always an easy thing to understand that number is going from the lower number to the higher number that is ascending and if number is coming from higher number to lower number then it, it is descending but if it is non number for example it is text or if it is characters then sorting order should be seen as per their ascii values remember that all capital alphabets come before lower case capital a starts from 65 and ends at uh, 90 which is z and a small uh, letter a It starts from 97 and go up till 122. So all the values which are from capital A would appear first in ascending order, and all the values which are starting from small a will appear later. So we can also understand it in terms of that all capital letters have priority in ascending order over the lower letters, and a uh, all the uh, names starting with capital A would appear first and. um capital z would appear later and after capital z small a names will start appearing this is all because of their ascii order so so what we actually are going to do is let's say if i have got uh, an array name which has got 1 2 3 and 4 values first value is z with zafar with zafar then we have got a with ali and then we have k with khan and then we have bilal b now we want to sort it this is unsorted and then what happens that if we have sorted it would become ali come first and then bilal then khan and then zafar so this transition from this to this means unsorted to sorted this is what we are going to do all right so this is actually can be done using several ways but over here in as Uh, there is just one algorithm uh, prescribed by cie and that is called bubble sort so we are going to discuss bubble sort so now first discuss first discuss what is bubble let's suppose that we have got two variables a which is having a value of 15 and let's say another variable b that is having 18 in it now what i want i want a to become b means a a's value should be 80 and b to become a means b's value should become 15 now if i go like a is equal to b that means that a's value will become 80 and b remains 80 and then if i say b is equal to a it means they both are 80 and 80 what i have done i have made a mistake that uh i actually overwritten value of a and if i go with like uh b is equal to a then it means that uh, b would become 15 and then if i write a is equal to b a's value will also be uh 15 because b we made b earlier 15 so this cannot be done this way so what we have to do this is a wrong thing what we have to do we have to employ or use an extra variable and let's assign that value of a to that extra variable this is let's say a temporary variable we used a temporary variable we assigned the value of a to that temporary variable so now x is equal to 15 then what we do we make a is equal to b 
the value of a will now become 80 as b is equal to 80 and then what we do we make b is equal to x as we preserve the value of a before making it 80 to x now the value of a will become 15 as x was 15 so using an extra variable x is equal to a a is equal to b and b is equal to x this particular way is correct and this is called bubble method this way we can employ an extra variable an additional variable a temporary variable over here by the name x and we once we make use of an extra variable we actually tend to save values which we missed earlier here because original value got overlapped now x is having the value of a then we make to a is equal to b and now a has 80 although we have overwritten a because it was 15 but since before overwriting a with b we save the value of a to x which is a temporary variable and then we assign x to uh, b so now b has got the value which x had now they both are conveniently exchanged so this is called buffer uh, bubble now let's let's see that how we exchange two different elements values in um, an array obviously we also gonna use uh, the same technique so let's say i want to exchange this zafar with ali all right so what i would do the name of the variable is name i mean the name of the array is name so let's say i would say i would write name x is equal to name one name one is equal to name two and name two is equal to x that is how what i would do that i will make this position one two three four when i say x is equal to name one name one would have zafar in it so the value of x will become zafar then i say name one is equal to name two so it means that uh, zafar will be gone ali will take over it and then a uh, name two is equal to x so x was zafar so that is how we exchange two values now as we know that in array we can use uh, variables as um, subscripts so let's make use of that what will happen that i will put this whole thing in a loop for i is equal to one two three and i will make this name i x is equal to name i name i is equal to name i plus one and name i plus one is equal to x and then next i now what is happening what is happening is that i as index is one when it starts the loop x will become x is equal to name one x will become zafar name one will become name two i plus one is two 
so this place will be filled with ali zafar will be overwritten with ali and then name 2 becomes x x head zafar so ali is now in position 1 and zafar now is in position 2 afterwards i become 2 now This is Khan and this is Bilal. So what has happened that Ali has come here. This is Zafar. This is Khan. This is Bilal. Now I is 2. So x is equal to I2. The value of x is now uh, Zafar. I2 is equal to I3 because I is 2 so I plus 1 is 3. So this Zafar now become Khan and I3 is equal to X which was Zafar so it has become now this. So this Zafar has been removed, it has come down here and Khan has gone up. Now I becomes 3 this time. So X is equal to I3 i3 is zafar i3 is equal to i4 i plus 4 so this zafar has now become bilal and then i plus 1 x is 3 remember i plus 1 4 is equal to x which is now zafar so now the area's position has become like this ali khan bilal and Zafar. You need to uh, understand two things over here. Number one, that loop was not until four for the reason that we have been using i plus one over here. If I go up till four, that, that means that i plus one, four, uh, i plus one will become five, four plus one will become five at the end of the loop and there is no fifth element. That is a permanent error, that is runtime error. If such thing happens that the program tries to access a location in the array, an element in the array which does not exist, then the program crashes. So you need to understand that we have to run the loop until here because we will be matching these two values and we don't have any value further so this loop will always go uh, upper bound minus up to upper bound minus one location now we don't do, want to do it if it is not in favor what does that mean it means that uh, we will only do it if the first value is greater than second value means since this Ali is uh, smaller than Zafar, these two should not get exchanged. But this Zafar is greater than Khan, so these two should get exchanged. This Khan is greater than Bilal, so these two should get exchanged. So what we gonna do is, I gonna put um, an if condition here, which will be like if, name i is greater than name i plus one then i will do it otherwise i won't then do this and if so now what is happening that at every loop system is checking if the ith position is greater than i plus one position if it is true then only this um, loop is uh, uh, this exchange bubble exchange is happening so let's do it with the these value now let's see if it is all working properly. Let's say these are our original values. Ali, Zafar, Khan, Bilal. Ali, Zafar, Khan, and Bilal. For i is equal to one, two, three. So let's say if the value of i is now one, 
So if it is checking if name one is greater than name two, if Ali is greater than Zafar, no, it is not. So it will go down to and if next I, I will become two. Now it is checking if name two is greater than name three, if Zafar is greater than Khan, yes. Then what will happen that this Khan will come up and this Zafar will go down, rest two remains the same. Then I becomes three. Now it is checking if name three, which is now Khan, oh sorry, Zafar, name three is greater than name four, which is Bilal, yes, that is true. So this Bilal will come up as this Zafar goes down. This Bilal now will come up and this uh, Zafar will go down. Now what will happen? The final value will be Ali, Khan, Bilal and Zafar. Now you need to understand that this loop has ended but the thing is that this array is not yet fully um, sorted. So we have to run this for next once again. Now for that we have to put it in an other for next. So we have to run this for next over here until the whole array is sorted. So let's say we have got four values in the array. Let's make another loop which goes like for j is equal to one to four and next j. Now second time as I told you earlier that for every outer count there's a complete cycle of inner count. Now in first cycle, this is what has happened means when J was one, this has happened. Now this is the current condition of the uh, array name. After first loop, Ali, Khan, Bilal and Zafar. Before first loop, it was Ali, Zafar, Khan, Bilal. Now let's say J is two now. J is two. So now for second iteration of J, the whole loop of i will be executed now for i is equal to one two three so if it says that if ali is greater than khan no this loop ends i becomes two if khan is greater than bilal yes in this case bilal will come up and khan will go down now this is the third iteration if uh, name three is greater than name four if Khan is greater than Zafar, no, it is not. So only one exchange has happened. This inside loop is now finished. So this is the current condition. Ali, Bilal, Khan and Zafar. This has now been sorted, but still outside loop would, would go for another time because this is the fourth time we have written this program this way that uh, this will happen as many times as the number of elements here. So if i is equal to, for, for j is equal to four, this would be checked once again, i is one. So it is checking if Ali is greater than Bilal, no. i becomes two, if Bilal is greater than Khan, no. i becomes three, if Khan is greater than Zafar, no. So in any of the inner iterations, since the whole um, array is now in ascending order, nothing has happened, but it's still j loop work. So this is regarded as uh, an inefficient sorting algorithm. But this is what we meant by bubble sort. That we have sorted the whole array in ascending order. That is how the bubble sort works. Now, let's revise it. So first thing I told you, let's say, is about the array. So let's say this is an array whose name is to be sorted TBS, which has got five values. The lower bound is one, the upper bound is five. All right. So now we will represent this subscript or index with I in this loop. So what is happening? We are actually, uh, sorting an array which is character data type and it has got values a b c d e it is already sorted 
All right. So from my uh, perspective, it will never be exchanged. Any, any of the value in this array will never be exchanged. Anyways, so we have used another loop outside this. Uh, as you would have noticed in previous uh, slide, that when the first time we um, ran this loop, the largest value has come down. We checked these two, nothing has happened. We checked these two, Khan came up and Zafar came, went down. And then Zafar and Bilal, when they were checked, Bilal came up and Zafar went down. So whatever the first value is, sorry, whatever the largest value is in first of the loop, means outer loop cycle, it goes to the end. So we don't have to check these values up till that last element. Now, we have to start from, uh, as we know that when the first time inner loop goes on, the largest value will come down. We start from the largest upper bound minus one to one. When we go back, we have to put this loop this way, upper bound to one, step minus one. So we will go from four to one. So outer loop will go from four to one because we know when we will check for up inside the loop, we have put it this way that i is, e I is equal to one to j. So j starts from four. So it will go from one to four. And in one to four, the highest value e will come down. Then we uh, then when it goes out, it will become three. So for j is equal to uh, for j is equal to 4 to 1, now the j has become 3, now this loop will go from 1 to 3. When it will reach to 3, the value up to 4 will be changed. And that is how it will go further. Now, I have used a flag over here. So this flag, like in last slide, I have shown that although before the last time outer loop started, the array was uh, actually sorted fully, but still the loop worked. And that is why I qualified that uh, algorithm as uh, inefficient. I disqualified, in fact. So this particular flag will help us. So before the inner loop starts, we made this flag false, was swap, was swap, was false and if any of the swap happens then we made it true so how it works whenever there is a single swap it has become true and if this was not the case then was swap will remain false so when the whole inner loop worked and was swap remains false it means not a single exchange has happened because the array is already sorted. So if it is sorted, it was false, it remained false, there was no, there was no single swap, then we don't have to run outer loop any more times, we have to get out. So here we will use if was swap is equal to false, then exit false. So it is simple. The array that we are given might have few values to swap before it becomes in ascending order or it is already in ascending order. So we may have the best case, it is already in ascending order. We have a mixed case when few of the values will get exchanged and it will be in ascending order and we have the worst case when every value is has, has to be uh, swapped. It is jumbled, most jumbled array. So at any given time, at any given point, uh, if the array is already, let's say, if the array is already sorted, outer loop will work once and inner loop will work once. And then we would have, because of this uh, flag idea that nothing has been swapped, so we will get out. If it has happened out of four loops, out, outer four loops, it has happened in second loop, then the third loop will not be executed and system will get out. 
if it is in worst condition that all the values are jumbled then it will go up to the last loop possible and it will be sorted in any case the whole array will be sorted now what you have seen over here that in outer loop we have gone from upper bound minus one to one in reverse order and it for inner loop we have gone from one to the upper uh, loops current count and we have used um, a flag inside it now it is fully efficient because we have made use of a flag which would not let this loop work any further if the array in the middle or in the start or at any point of time during the execution of the program is sorted and secondly we know that in every uh, inside loop and at every inside loops end the highest value comes down and afterwards when the inside loop works one the value before it second highest value comes on top of it and then the third highest value on top of it so it means that when we know that inside loop when works once completely the highest value comes down so we don't have to check it fully the array so we start off from the upper bound minus one position because we know that upper bound position will be having the highest value in it and then we go further because the highest value is not needed to be um, checked again so last thing as we know that uh, we have uh, subroutines in place as well so whatever uh, the procedure that you are going to write should be having its own subroutine most of the questions answer that you are expected to write should be in their respective subroutine so this subroutine is called bubble and it receives the array needed to be sorted and the upper bound so this array is to be sorted has been received as parameter in this procedure bubble and another parameter which tells that how big this array is so i have made this subroutine fairly flexible which can uh, sort any any of the array from top to the bottom all right any sized array from top to the bottom so here we have used this parameter and uh, the array which is received now this is inside loop which works from one to upper bound minus one whatever the upper bounds value is uh, i'm going to introduce another option where inside loop is uh, in uh, for next but outside loop i'm going to change uh, the loop to while then i used the flag swap made it true and then i have written that while swap remains true and before starting inside loop i have made swap false so if there was a single swap happened i made the swap true when it gets out of this for next and it it reaches out to end while and while checks that if it is true then it works since there was a swap so there's possibility that there are further swaps so it works until it is true and before starting inside loop we have made it false so if inside if in inside loop there is no swap happened swap will remain false so end while will check that if it is true it works if it is not true it is false then it gets out so this is another option that we have Again, we have to put it inside an array. Oh, I mean the subroutine. Now, this is from the book. This is for the first inside loop. What has happened that if you if you see all these values, 98 is the highest value. This is inside loop. First inside loop. There are two loops, outside and inside. Out for every outer loop, there is a complete cycle of inner loop so now these two values are compared no exchange happened no swap then these two values are compared no swap then these two values are compared 7 came up 98 came down 
Now you need to understand that this 98 is the highest value. So when the inner loop ends, this 98 gets down to the last location. So outer loop will go from this location to this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So outer loop starts from six to one. And inner, inner loop goes from one to six because when it is six, it is checking six plus one, two as well. So now this is one inside loop finished. Now the value is 25, 34, 7, 41, 19, and 15. This will be checked and then 41 will come down. Then 34 will come down. Then, then 25 will come down. Then uh, 19 will come down. And that is how when the outer loop finishes, whole array is sorted over here. This is another perspective from the book. Uh, they have made n maximum index minus one. Maximum index is upper bound. And they ran the loop from i, for i is equal to one to maximum index minus one. And for every i, there's a complete cycle of j. j goes from one to n. n is maximum index minus one. And the same bubble sorting happens and the loop works again and again and again and for the outer loop and um and n's value goes down so they have not tied up this um countdown with the outer loop rather they are counting their value down by themselves this is another way though it is not very efficient or learnable way but it works as well Now this is the program. This program has got two subroutines, main and bubble, as we made earlier. So we made one array, this array with five values, five elements and as character. Then we ran this program and the whole array is uh, read. Uh, I mean, all five values were read from the keyboard and assigned to array, this is population. Then with that input values whole array populated is sent to this subroutine now you need to understand when the array is being sent as a parameter it appears like a variable because we don't have to put any parentheses here or the upper bound in it it is all just like another parameter so we sent this array, this array as parameter to this subroutine, which is a procedure bubble and the upper bound five. So this array is now received in to be sorted array by reference. By reference means it is now received with a pointer, means whatever that is happening over here with this to be sorted is actually happening with this array over here in the main subroutine they both are referring to the same array with different names because it is being received as by ref and then upper bound will be receiving five so what swap is equal to uh, false it is boolean variable and then j goes from upper bound whatever upper bound four to one step minus one was swap made false and i goes from one to the value one to four for the very first time then one to three and all was up was made false and if during the inner loop there was any swap uh, swapping happened then was up was made true otherwise was remains false if it remains false it gets out and control goes back to the main subroutine and if it does not after the complete um, sorting of the array it goes back and there it outputs the whole array to the screen so these are the values which we have put when the input was taken five four three two one and then output one two three four was done number of loops that work was 10 how did we count it actually what i did is uh, i put uh, a variable inside the loop so that it could count that how many times the loop has worked the inner loop has worked how many times how many runs it has made this is a so this a was also output 
so it was so badly messed up that all of the array was actually um, sorted in 10 loops start in reverse order latest to oldest questions so let's take this question from may june 2018 this is question number five i believe this question asks a golf club holds information about its members when a member completes a round of golf their score is stored along with their membership number and the date of the round explain why the club stores these data in a file rather than an array now this is another important thing to remember that array is a data structures data structures are in ram so they are not permanent as soon as computer is shut down the data in the ram is gone that is why all the files that we create in any of the software we save it first so that it is uh, uh, it remains and when we restart the computer we actually uh, hold it uh, i mean load it back so now because we need to have this data permanently we have to save it over the disk in a file and array always resides inside the ram and uh, it is not permanent in nature that is why we um, the club stores these data in file rather than an array let's take this question from may june 2018 uh, 9608p to do this question is this question says a golf club holds information about its customers when a number completes a round of golf their score is stored along with their membership number and the data of the round a program is to be written to store and process the score information the information to be stored is formed into a string as follows membership number date and score the program designer considers storing the string in either a 1d array whose name is round score or as a separate variables for each round for example round score one round score two round score three and so on so describe two advantages of storing the string in 1d array rather than a separate variable or as separate variables so this is uh, a simple that uh, we don't have to describe we don't have to declare so many variables but a single 1d array of the same data type all operations that is second advantage like searching sorting populating an array becomes very easy other advantage may be more efficient coding less declaration statements needed as this says access of individual elements using index uh, code is easier to understand obviously we would have less to write and less to understand then now another question this is question number six 
from the same paper that is uh, may june 18 222 question 6 individual elements in a 1d area referenced using an integer value that is used as subscript to the array uh, give the technical terms for the minimum and maximum values the subscript may take we know about it minimum minimum value is called lower bound and maximum value is called upper bound now a 2d array picture as we can see i told you that 2d array is array that has more than one columns so these are column column one column two column three as we can see over here there are one two three four five six seven eight columns and one two three four five rows so these are columns increasing in this order and then we have got rows increasing in this order so it says uh, a 2d array picture contains data representing a bitmap image each element of the array this is one element this is one element mind it so this is one element second third fourth fifth sixth seventh and eighth Each element of the array represents one pixel of the image. The image is grayscale encoded where the, uh, the value of each pixel range from 0 to 255. As you can see over here that this box represents 80. So the, this is 80, this is 255 and similarly this is 120, um, this is 80, you can relate it. These all can be related. So pixel ranges from 0 to 255, uh, 0 which represents black and 255 represents white with intermediate values re representing different levels of gray. A graphic program needs a procedure flip to flip reflect the image an example of the image before and after the function is this for example this one this particular element will be flipped in here this one will be flipped here and similarly you can see that this side is flipped in here this side flipped in here so these these values are being flipped from left side to the right side so you can imagine what we are going to do so there is a procedure flip uh, to flip reflect the image an example of the image before and after the function is this. All right. In pseudocode, the array is declared as the follows, as follows. Declare picture 1, 5, 1, 8. So we can see that this is number of rows, 1, 5, and then this is number of columns, 1, 8. Now it says write pseudocode to implement the flip procedure assuming. Uh, that picture is a global variable. Assuming picture as a global variable means that this array is available to this procedure without any hurdle. So now let's see what we are going to do. First of all, it's a procedure. So let's write uh, procedure flip. All right, so now we are going to use uh, the same strategy as bubble sort. 
what we are going to do we are going to take uh, this value and keep it in temporary and then copy this value to pictures other side over here and then uh, making other side equals temp we have to flip we have to flip so this 255 will go there and this 80 will come over here so that is how we're going to do it so we need to understand that uh, these are one two three four five six seven and eight uh, columns so what we actually are doing We are running a loop from one to five means for every row and then for every column. All right, and then we are uh, swapping these values. So let's see how. First of all, I'm not declaring any variable. As soon as we require any variable, we will do that. So let's say for row is equal to one, two, five you can use an arrow as well that i actually don't use but that does not make any difference and then what do we need we need to declare declare row, row as um, uh, integer <laughs> then we need for column is equal to one two eight as we know that there are one two three four five rows and then one two three four five six seven eight columns it means that we are going to run a loop for every row and within a row every column all right so uh, then what we do then we take A temporary variable first temporary is equal to picture that is the name of array row comma column so now we have a value uh, this value okay and we have put it in temporary now we have to have a check so that we could move this value in here we could move this value in here and then we will swap this value with the temporary value so what we are going to do is now we write picture row comma column is equal to we have to actually uh, run it so that uh, it becomes equal to this eight so now itself it is one all right column is one which is i or sorry row i mean column all right so we will make it equal to picture same row comma 9 minus column now why 9 minus column if we are at column 1 then 9 minus 1 will become 8 if we are at column 2 then 9 minus 2 becomes 7 if we are at column 3 9 minus 3 becomes 6 if we are at column 4 then 9 minus 4 becomes 5 if we are at column 5 then 9 minus 5 becomes 4 all right so that is why you need to understand that if we have reached 4 then we are actually going to overlap so this 8 would not be 8 rather it would be 4 
all right so now since we are at column 1 9 minus 1 will become 8 so this will become equal to 8 now picture row 9 minus column is equal to 10 we swapped it all right now end column end row and we need to have row column and temp declared as integer that is how the question will be solved and then we have to finish the procedure and procedure all right so let me revise we have to run this uh, procedure from values in one two four for every row and then we will be swapping this uh, column from the far end this column with this this column with this this column with this all right so what we do first we take it in temporary then we will be making it equal to this and then we will be making equal this equal to temporary and these two are swapped and then we go further we do this operation with this then this then this and afterwards we start with second row then third row then fourth row and then fifth row that is how it will work practice it uh, basically you would know it uh, better uh, look into the marking scheme for the same paper and uh, try it yourself hopefully uh, you will get it now let's see a question further this is eight mark question so that's about it for this question six this is uh, a good example of uh, array manipulation let's take another question So let's explore another question from October, November, 2018, paper two, three. This is uh, question three. It says an array contains 100 integer values. An algorithm will find the maximum and minimum values stored in the array. A programmer has started to write this program using a conditional loop. Uh, name a more appropriate loop structure for this uh, algorithm. For this task and justify your choice. So now name should be uh, for next loop. I explained this that the best loop for this is for next loop as the lower bound and upper bound are always uh, known. And we also call it uh, count controlled, count based or controlled, count controlled loops. Now, justification should be uh, lower and upper bounds are already known and uh, which means number of loops will be fixed um, that's it i think that would be good enough now it says 
outline the steps the program will need to follow to implement the algorithm and what is that algorithm a programmer has started to write this program using a conditional loop an algorithm will find the maximum and minimum values stored in the array now let's first uh, write the algorithm and then we will decide that how do we actually uh, describe it whatever uh, first of all we have to have uh, maximum and minimum declare max comma min as no we don't have to write as rather we have to put colon here as integer and then um, we will make maximum is equal to what's the name of array an array contains 100 values so there is no name given so let's call it number array number one we made this maximum value equal to number one and we will also make minimum value equal to number one so the first value is maximum and minimum then we will run the loop from first location to the hundred location for count is equal to one to one hundred and what we are going to write is no for, not from one rather from uh, two because we have taken first value already so now we will we will write if num count is greater than maximum then maximum is equal to num count same we will do for minimum if num count is less than minimum then minimum is equal to num count next count and then we are going to output maximum is equal to max and then output minimum is equal to min so see this is quite simple algorithm like o levels which actually needs you to first first of all declare two variables uh, maximum and minimum and then we have to run a loop first of all we will make maximum and minimum equal to the first value of uh, the array which is at the lower bound and then we will start from second to the hundredth element of the array and we will compare every element of the array uh, with the maximum if the value is greater than maximum it means we need to set the maximum now to the current value if it is not then we leave it similarly we will check if the value at the array's current location is less than minimum then we will update our minimum and the whole thing will go on and once we get out of the array we will have our maximum and minimum output so we have to outline the steps now see i'm going to write steps number one declare minimum and maximum variables 
make minimum and maximum equal to first element of the array number 3 run a loop through the array compare every element with maximum and minimum update maximum and minimum uh, if they are larger or smaller than the current element so that is how you will answer it there we go the whole question is answered now so let's see what's next question is next question is a different question but it has got array in it so let's see the scope of array the number of dimensions of this array number of dimensions of this array number of dimensions of this array is actually 1 to 100 rows and 1 to 10 columns so 100 rows and 100 10 columns this is the dimension now let's see if there is any other question no this is file related question so question for this paper are ended let's find out more questions all right this is uh, paper 4 although paper 4 does not fit in as but the thing is that this bubble sort topic is common among paper 2 and paper 4 so there was a question which is actually a question which needs your attention it will be a good question for practice that is question 2 let's solve question 2 which is related to bubble sort now this question says that the array item list 1 to 20 stores data a bubble sort sort these uh, these data complete the pseudo code algorithm for a bubble sort so so maximum index is uh Twenty. So it means that uh, this twenty is actually upper bound. Number of items is equal to. Since this loop is running one to number of items, and we know that uh, this should be at least uh, one less than the upper bound. so um, we can make this number of items is equal to maximum index minus 1 so for outer count goes from 1 to uh, maximum index minus 1 or number of items since number of items is updating over here we cannot use it in the loop because that will actually affect the loop so let's make it maximum index minus 1 so for inner loop is equal to 1 to number of index 1 uh, to number of items if number of item if item list inner is greater than 
item list inner plus one it is checking itself with the next element and then temporary is equal to item list inner and then item list inner is equal to item list inner plus one and item list inner plus one is equal to temp this is bubble sort number of items is equal to number of items minus one remember this is how it was mentioned in the book since the author of the book helen williams is uh, actually our chief examiner so it is a good idea to solve questions and to observe algorithms from the book most of the times if you see because helen williams is the writer the author of the book and she is the chief examiner questions do appear as book so she is inclined towards uh, the questions as mentioned in her own book so next part explain why the algorithm in part a is inefficient now the thing is that uh, uh, i told you that there is there should be a flag now there is no flag in it so if there is no flag in it we have to write that iterations will continue loop will continue even if the array is sorted that is why we call it it is uh, inefficient it is efficient in a way that it is reducing the number of items to be compared and swapped but it is not efficient in a way that it should it is checking that if the array is already sorted so it should get out of the loop there is no such thing in it all right so explain how would you improve the efficiency of this algorithm simply uh, this is how many marks three marks question so we gonna write that we will use uh, the flag for the indication if any of the swap uh, have uh, any of the swaps have taken place uh, if the inner loop is completed and there is no such swap happened then the flag will be uh, will not be set and it will remain false as it was set earlier and after the ending of inner loop we will check if the um, if the if the flag is uh, unchanged if it is unchanged then we will break out of the outer loop that is how we will make uh, further efficient now that's it for this question let's find out if there is any more another question same from paper four related to bubble sort uh, this is may june 2018 uh, paper four two question number three in this question three october november uh, four two 2018 a bubble sort algorithm is used to store an integer array list this algorithm can process arrays of different lengths so write pseudocode to complete the bubble sort algorithm so for outer is equal to uh, we need to find the length of the um, array so let's say uh, the length is uh, arrived in some sort of pseudocode or we can use the function length for that as well so let's take function length or the maximum value for outer is equal to upper bound minus 1 to zero step minus one remember this is a two's paper so the lowest lower index is uh, uh, lower bound is zero so for inner count is equal to zero to outer minus one now 
now the name of the array is list if list inner is greater than list inner plus 1 then temporary is equal to list inner list inner is equal to list inner plus 1 and list inner plus 1 is equal to temporary now this is uh, completed now what it says further let's see state the order of the sorted array this is ascending order as this is here uh, greater than it is ascending order if the previous value is greater than next value then the next value will come before the previous value that is how it makes ascending from lower value to the higher one so state uh, which line of the algorithm would you change to sort the array into opposite order obviously here instead of greater than we will use less than in that case if the previous value is, is smaller than the next value it will swap so bigger value will come first and smaller value will go afterwards so that will make the whole array inverse so which line number is this line number is 3 and uh, the change will be if list inner is less than list inner plus 1 all right so let's see further use pseudocode to write an alternative version of the bubble sort algorithm that will exit algorithm when the list is fully sorted so now they are asking us for uh, the use of flag all right so use of flag so now we will be writing an algorithm with the help of flag now so um so let's make this flag swap is equal to false and then let's make their own um way outer bound is uh, equal to uh, um, upper bound minus one and then we have to use an alternative way so let's use repeat or while we, we can use while as well so inner is equal to zero swap again we have to make it false because before every inner loop we would have to make it false and we will have to check after in a loop if it remained false and then inner loop repeat so this loop will go on if list inner we have made inner zero because the lower bound is zero inner is greater than list inner plus one then we will use temp temp is equal to list inner list inner is equal to list inner plus one this bubble always remains the same and then list inner plus one is equal to ten but you need to understand that a swap has happened so we have to update this swap is equal to 
true. Now, and if we would have to now check uh, if uh, um, let's do it later. First, let's update inner. Inner is equal to inner plus one. Inside loop ends now, and then we have to end inside loop until inner is equal to outer minus one. So when I start from zero and go all the way to the outer loop minus one position, and then we have to reduce outer as well. Outer is equal to outer minus one, and then we have another until that will kick us out if the swap is equal to false is still if it is false if it, it if it is has if it has not turned yet to true and it is is still false uh, then it is out what if it is uh, uh, not false even to the last um, swap so in that case you would have to check that if the outer is uh, reduced here down to zero means every single position not has just been checked but the, even the last position last position of the last loop of the last turn are actually being swapped so or outer has now got down to zero in both of the cases uh, this uh, loop will be uh, working so at any given point because of this um, flag if the array is uh, sorted in between so it will not work or in other case if it is quite haphazard and to the last minute it was swapping then outer when becomes zero the loop will be breaking all right so this is another array related question from May June 2019, uh, paper 2-1. This is question number three. It says that, that a student is developing an algorithm to search through 1D array of 100 elements. Each element of the array, the name of the array is result contains a real value. If it is a real value, then we would have to actually look for numbers which are having decimal places. The algorithm will output the average value of all the elements and the number of elements uh, with a value of zero. So they have given us a structured English. Now this is another way of uh, expressing the uniqueness of algorithms, but this does not describe any uh, declarations and initializations and loopings in terms of uh, pseudocode. It, it is simple code. You have to remember that you might be asked for um, uh, structured English as well. So you don't have to actually um, initialize and all in structured English um, like we do in pseudocode, but it, these are simple English um, statements. So let's see how do we convert these statements to structured English. It says that write the pseudocode for it. So let's write pseudocode for it on a screen. So it says uh, set total value to zero. So let's make total is equal to zero. Set zero count to zero. So let's make it zero is equal to zero. It zero is a variable or may, let's make total value or zero, whatever that you like. Select the first element. So this is like for 
index is equal to 1 to 100 and then uh, we have to set the total first total is equal to total plus what is the name of uh, array result result first index and then we have to check if the first index is uh, at the value of element to total and if element value is zero then increment zero count so if result i is equal to 0, 0.0 since it is a, a real number we have to check if it is 0, 0.0 or maybe another zero so if the value is um, like 0.5 or whatever then we make this variable zero here then zero is equal to zero plus one we counted it and then next i uh if element if element value is zero then increment zero count repeat from step four for next element until the last element so next i set average to total divided by 100 so average is equal to total divided by 100 and then it says that output suitable message and average output suitable message and zero so output average is equal to from a average variable and output total is equal to total there we go this is a simple question i'm sorry i think uh, while i was writing it was not appearing on the screen so let me just uh, revise it for you uh, you can see that uh, it says that set total value is equal to zero so it has made it zero set zero count to zero we have done it over here then select the first item this is how we have selected a loop to start with add value of the element to the total that is how we have done it total is equal to total plus result i result is the name of uh, the variable or i mean the array then if element uh, value is zero we have checked it here if result i is equal to zero then zero is equal to zero plus one they wanted us to increase the count in the zero and then it says that repeat steps four uh, four um, for next element until the element last so we have done it here with for and next set average value to total divide by 100 we have done it over here and then output a message output average is equal to average and output suitable message and zero count so we have actually done it properly uh, do check out the marking scheme for the code it is there i believe um, this is uh, just for your understanding that how we actually convert a structured english to its pseudocode let's see what it further says the student uh, decided to change the algorithm and implement uh, it as a procedure a scan array which will be called with three parameters now a scan array average value zero count and array name scan array will modify the first two parameters so that the new value are available to the calling program right Achha. it means that will modify the first two parameters it means that these are being called using by ref and array name is being received as uh, by well So, array name was result. So, this will become 
procedure scan array by ref average value as real by ref remember to put this underscore when you are continuing the same statement in the next line that is how it is done zero count as uh, integer and array name is uh, what result by well they don't prefer There might be chance that this particular line, the last one, may be different in CIE. Anyways, uh, you will get marks for it. All right. So let's see if it is finished. Yes, it is finished. Now viewers, uh, this was the last thing. Actually, if you do remember, they said that your program should be in a language. I described programs in language. They should be in pseudocode. We have discussed so many pseudocode. And the last thing that they said that is stru structured English and uh, the flowchart. So we just have seen that how structured English works. And now uh, let's do a question, which is from the recent paper in June 2019, uh, paper 2.3, which is related to the flowchart. So let's discuss that question. Now, this is question number one. It says that following pseudocode searches for the longest run of identical characters in the array message. So that is how it is given. So let's uh, make a flow chart for this. Uh, flow chart for this particular. It says that draw of program flowchart to represent the procedure search. Variable and array declarations are not required in the program flowchart. So that is also the case. These are not required in the program flowchart. So, so declaration is uh, not required. We know that uh, there are four basic shapes which we have to actually use. First one is uh, start stop. Then we have um, assignment process. Wherever there will be an assignment, the process will be used. And then condition for any case. And if we will be using this condition box. And then we have input and output in a parallelogram. This is for IU. So let's start. Declaration is not required. So we are starting with start. Then we go further and what it says, it says uh, uh, this character is equal to message one. I make it one. So this, these are all assignments. So these assignments will go there one. And then for index is equal to two. Since there is no particular shape for uh, um, this loop index, we will only be assigning uh, two to index to start with. 
and then we go further and we see how do we actually um, deal with it. So this is two. Then it checks if message index is equal to this car. Is message index is equal to this car. If it is uh, true, it goes on right. And if it says no, it goes straight. I mean, let's make it, this is true. Let's say we use words. Yes, there. Uh, then this run is equal to this run plus one. So this is three. Then this run is equal to this run plus one. This is three. And then in else case, it says that this This is four, which is no. And then this if will come after four. If long run is greater than, if this run is greater than long run, if this run is greater than long run, if it is true, yes. Then long run is equal to this run. This is six. If it is not, it goes directly here. No. And then afterward, this run is equal to one. This is seven. And then this also ends. And then we have end for now. We have to run this thing until uh, index is equal to 100. So we have to increase index. All right. So it says that uh, index is equal to index plus one. And then we have to check if index is uh, greater than 100. Is index is greater than 100. If it is yes, we go out. If it is no, then we have to get back to here. Yeah. If it is less than or equal to 100, it goes back and the whole procedure will be uh, repeated inside for and next. And then when it gets out, it gives you a parallelogram for output and then it ends. Stop. Remember you have to practice several flowcharts Otherwise, it will become tough for you to translate. So do find out a few of the pseudocodes and try turning them into uh, the flowcharts. If you would do that, that would be a good thing to go about. Otherwise, this will become troublesome for you to deal with the flowcharts, uh, making flowcharts from the pseudocodes. Now there is another question from October, November, 2017, uh, paper two, two, this is question number two. It says that one D array class name of type string contains hundred elements. The following pseudocode represents a simple algorithm to process the array. Uh, as we can see that it is inputting a value here, then making the uh, found flag false. Clearly, we are going to deal with uh, an algorithm of the array for searching. And this is linear searching since index is also increasing one by one. So while index is less than 101, obviously increasing one by one and it will work from one to 100. So it, they have made it one and this will be increasing one by one and loop will run whenever 
the index is less than 101 which means until 100 or uh, the found flag is equal to false so until the font flag is false and index is less than 101 this loop will work so first the search value will be entered and then uh, this will be um, searched through the array in every loop this is not for next loop this is while and and while loop so you have to understand that in for next it is count based so it counts itself but if it is while then we have to actually increase the count by ourselves so rest is same at any given point if it uh, finds the value which is being searched it outputs the value and make the found flag true so that at the end if the found flag is uh, false they could tell that it is not found it is exactly the way we have uh, discussed it in the introduction of array describe the purpose of the algorithm i have explained that this is searching and also using uh, the flag so that it could output proper message towards the end so draw a program flowchart to represent this algorithm you do it yourself now let's solve um, a, a, a bit complicated question this is question three of paper 96023 uh, from june 16. this is question three let's solve this question This question says that a string encryption was implemented using a simple character substitution method. A function decrypt is needed to reverse the encryption process and return the original character. The encryption uses 7-bit ASCII value for each character. This value is used as an index for the 1D array lookup, which contains the substitute character. Lookup contains uh, an entry for each of the ASCII characters. This function decrypt will accept two parameters, a single character cipher character and the 1D array lookup. The steps involved decrypt are as follows. Search for the character in the array. Note the index value where the character is found. The index value is the ASCII value of the original character. Use the index value to obtain the original character. Remember the thing is already decrypted. So we have to actually, uh, sorry, already encrypted, we have to decrypt it. All right. So the first attempt uh, at writing the pseudocode for the function is as blow. Now what is happening? If you have to understand it first at what is actually happening so that you could answer properly. So now what is happening is that you, this function will receive a, uh, character and uh, it says that the character is actually um, the cipher character cipher character will be received the cipher character is received cipher character all right here it is written so cipher character is received then we have to search for that cipher character suppose that cipher character that is received is equal to b so we have found b here so we will take this ascii character 69 and actual character will be the character for this index So this will be E, actual character is E. So B is received as cipher character and it is now decrypted as per the ASCII. So now what is actually happening? A string encryption was implemented using a simple character substitution method. A function decrypt is needed to reverse the encryption process and return the original character. The encryption uses 7-bit ASCII value for each uh, character. These indexes are actually ASCII values. The value is used as an index for the 1D array lookup. This is array lookup, which contains substitute characters. Lookup contains an entry for each of the ASCII character. The function decrypt will accept two parameters, single character, cipher character, and 1D array lookup. 
the the steps involved in decryption are as follows search for the character in the array as we have searched for b uh note the index we have index and uh, six, 69 there uh where the character is found and use the index value to opt obtain the uh, original character with the help of the function that turns index into uh, i mean ascii into the character so let's uh, solve this this is easy question now this function is decrypt it is accepting two values and returning the character so the first uh, uh, value is lookup the array the name of the array lookup all right and the second value it is an array and the second value is the character which needs to be cipher uh, character which was actually a character now it returns a character declare found found is a is a flag so it will be initialized as boolean and then uh, something needs to be declared as well so let's find what that thing is oh that's index so declare index as integer and then declare original index is equal to uh, one I start with the first element of array start with the first element of the array this is what you have to write this is actually a comment found is equal to false so this flag uh, is uh, being initialized now search start search now how long do we have to search until two things or let's just put it to the flag so until found is equal to false when the found will be true it will become uh, obvious that the value is found uh, so there is no need to go any further so now if look up index is equal to cipher character then set the flag means found is equal to true otherwise we have to increase the index index is equal to index plus 1 the loop will go on if you have found then you know that the index is actually the ascii character of actual character so uh, they have made it original character here so now we have to set the value of the original character so we would say original character is equal to char of or maybe just char would be enough char of index and return what original character so this was a, a paper 23 in paper 22 the reverse of it is there we, there we have to decrypt it over here sorry encrypt it here we have to decrypt it over there it is to encrypt it this is a good idea to solve that question in conjunction with this particular